हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर मेंटर फॉर करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट क्विकली बिगिन टूडेज क्लास ओके सो बिफोर बिगिनिंग लेट मी इन्फॉर्म यू दैट वी हैव लॉन्च दी लाइव कोर्सेज फॉर आर बी एस एबी एन अबार्ड एंड द टाइम टेबल इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड दिस इज आर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन विच यू कैन डाउनलोड फ्रॉम द गूगल प्ले स्टोर एंड हियर यू हैव वेरियस फीचर्स लाइक द डेली जी के quizzes exam updates topper strategy etc etc now we have the very first question of the day that is recently prime minister narendra modi has launched the karm yogi prarambh module an online or orientation course for all new appointees at rozgar mela via video conference under which scheme is the rozgar mela organized so here guys the right answer is option e pm kaushal vikas yojana now what is this karam yogi prarambh module now every kind of module is basically uh, you can say a bundled or structured course so similarly this is the online orientation course for the new appointees in the government department because i hope you remember that mission karan yogi was launched by the prime minister in order to equip the government employees with the latest technologies as well as to develop their capacities that is why the mission karan yogi is named as such karan yogi so that all the government officials become karmat okay taki wo apne karm ki taraf aur zyada nishthavan ho sake okay now this is the karam yogi prarambh module under which the training will be provided to the government employees who will be selected through the rozgar mela okay so that is the basic idea now it will include a code of conduct for the government servant workplace ethics integrity human resource policies etc etc now all such informations are not useful for you to remember but of course as a student you must have a broader understanding of the things that is why i have mentioned it here now the rozgar mela is organized under the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana and this guys is a very important fact and it can be asked in the examination under the rozgar mela scheme 10 lakh jobs will be available for the ca candidates to apply in group a and group b gazetted post group b non gazetted post and group c non gazetted post okay so through the rozgar mela on these post the government recruit the people okay now we have just read a very important statement that the rozgar melas are organized under the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana so let's learn about the scheme itself okay so the objective of the scheme kaushal vikas kaushal is scheme and vikas is the growth and development okay so the development of the skill among the youth now why do we want to skill the youth because we want them to become employable in the market right so the objective of the scheme is to encourage and promote skill development by providing free short term courses and incentivizing this by providing monetary reward to youth for skill certification okay so primarily this scheme is a skill certification scheme so whatever course you opt for you are going to get a certificate for that and you will get incentives for getting enrolled in the courses under this scheme because we have seen that without incentives it is very hard to encourage youth and especially the people from the urban semi urban and rural areas specifically semi urban and rural areas it is very hard to pull people towards skill development okay like the computer courses and many more courses so they this is being done by giving them incentives by giving them rewards okay now the implementing agency of the scheme is the N nsdc national skill development corporation the next in line is the launch year of the pradhan uh, mantri kaushal vikas yojana that is 2015 Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana 2.0 ha has also been launched and 3.0 has also been launched. First of all, let's learn about 2.0. So 2016 में ये launch किया गया था, just one year after the launch of the 1.0. Duration is four years, 2016 to 2020 because obviously after 1.0 has been over. Now we have the 2.0, so we are going to cover its duration. Now after 2.0 we have 3.0 as well and we are going to look at after a little while. 
Now the target of the scheme was 10 million youth trained. Okay, skill development of 10 million youth and the budgetary outlay of this scheme is 12,000 crores. Now we have seen that 10 million youth is the target. Let's see how many people have got the skill training under this scheme. So as of April 2022, a total of 94.17 lakh people have been trained under the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yochana, which is very near to its target. Because the target is 10 million, that is 1 crore, and 94.17 lakh people have been trained under the scheme. So, that is a, I would say, huge opportunity or uh, achievement for the scheme. But let's see what is going to happen now. The funding pattern. So, it is a centrally sponsored scheme. So, center and the state governments both are going to collaborate and contribute towards this scheme. So, this component is implemented by the National Skill Development Co Corporation. 75% of the total funding of 12,000 crores, 75% will be provided by the central government and 25% is by the state government. So, 75 is 2, 25 is the ratio. Do remember the ratio. Centrally, <clears throat> I guess, okay. Centrally sponsored, state managed. Now, guys, this scheme is sponsored by the center, but it is implemented by the state agencies. So, it is implemented by state governments through the state skill development missions. And 25% of the total funding is provided by the central government. Rest is provided by the respective state government. Now, what are we discussing here? We are discussing about the st state skill development missions through which the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana will be implemented. Okay, I hope you are understanding the distinction. The overall budgetary outlay, 12,000 crore ka 75% is being uh, contributed by the central government, 25% is being given by the state government. Now, with that 25% amount, the state is going to establish the state skill development missions and in those missions, the 25% of the funding will be given by the central government, whereas 75% of the funding will be given by the state. Okay, so that is the distinction. I hope you are understanding this point. Nevertheless, I hope you have covered this scheme earlier as well because this is one of the flagship schemes of the government and I hope you have covered it and this session is helping you in recollecting your facts and understanding. Even if you haven't covered the scheme thoroughly, now here I am talking about the scheme. So, please listen to me carefully and in case you are not able to understand any point in this video or in the scheme you can mention it in the comment section below now coming back to the scheme the 3.0 version of this scheme is aimed at supporting the local economy so the coverage is 717 districts and the target is to train 8 lakh candidates over a period of 2020 to 2021 and outlay for this one year period was 90, uh, 948.90 crore rupees. Okay. Now, all these informations are very useful as far as the PMKY 3.0 is concerned and the entire scheme is concerned. Now, you would be thinking that which outlay should we remember, what target should we remember and which tenure should we remember, right? Now, if these questions are in your mind, so let me resolve them. First of all, the outlay of 12,000 crore was the initial corpus of the scheme. So that is important guys. And the outlay of 3.0 is also important. So you should remember both the outlays because 12,000 crore was the complete outlay of the scheme. And this 948 is specifically for the third version of this scheme, third phase of this scheme, right? Then the target, the target that we covered 10 million youth, that was the target for 2016 to 2020 or 2015 to 2020 more precisely phase one plus phase two now here in the phase three we have been given a specific target that is eight lakh candidates over a period of one year so tenure of both the versions as well as the target as well as the outlays are important okay so that was all about the pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana and the mission karam yogis praram module now we are moving on to the question number two who is the author of why India does poorly on global perception indices, a case study of three opinion-based indices working paper released by the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. Now, before giving 
answer of this question my question from all of you is tell me the head of this economic advisory council to the prime minister as of now okay coming back to the news the head is sanjeev sanyal not the head but the author sanjeev sanyal and akansha aroda so here the right answer is option d okay now what is the paper exactly first of all it's a working paper so it's a kind of research paper they have uh, worked on the opinion based indices and they have uh, you can say made observations why india is performing poor in different global indices because we have seen the hunger index is also ranking india very poorly we are ranked 107 i guess this year's um, in this year's ranking so why is india ranked so poorly is it the reality or is it a fault in the methodology as the government claims so let's see what is the reality through this working paper although this has also been released by the government organization but we have seen the ranking and the perceptions or the side of the international organization releasing the indices now it's time for us to see the other side what the government of india is saying about the indices and why uh, these global indices are at fault okay now why are we discussing it first of all remember you may not be asked a question out of this working paper in your phase 1 or in your phase 2 but probably this can be asked in your interview round and we have to prepare holistically an integrated approach is important for you to crack the examination right now let's discuss this working paper after getting to know the significance of it okay so this is the name of the paper these are the authors authors ka naam yaad rakhna bahut zaruri hai because again i made the question on the authors as well now according to the working paper the common thread in all these indices first of all which indices are we talking about so here we are talking about three indices first is the freedom in the world index the economic intelligence units democracy index and the vdams uh, democracy index Okay, so we are talking about these three indices. So, what's the problem in the indices? According to the working paper, the common thread in these indices is that they are der derived from the perceptions or opinions of few experts. Okay, so this report is saying that first of all, it is based on the perception and opinion of few expert. Secondly, the decline in India's ranking on a number of global opinion-based indices are due to the serious problems with the methodology used in the perception based indices so here two problems have been highlighted first is that the indices have been prepared on the perception of certain experts and second is the flaw in the methodology uh, the institutions do not provide any transparency on how the experts were chosen and their nationality as well now why is the government concerned with the experts and their nationality the reason is first of all if the person who is making the index if that person is you can say educated and capable enough to judge the country or any region for any kind of uh, parameter then only we can say that the index is valid okay agar aap kisi kam padhe likhe ya fir kam knowledgeable insaan ko kahenge aap index banaiye to wo index kitna hi reliable hoga right secondly the nationality is important because the person who is living in a region or in a country would be in a better position to tell the ground level reality in comparison to the person who is sitting far away from the land okay so that is why the working paper is highlighting this problem that the exports and their nationalities and their expertise are not revealed by these indices except for the vdam vdam provides it clearly apart from this there was one more suggestion in the working paper that india's think tanks should also release certain perception based indices to give a challenge to these international indices and at the same time to give a true picture of india's ground reality to the world and also the uh, rank the world countries so that is the one suggestion of this working paper okay apart from this there were other uh, i would say other uh, Uh, problems highlighted by the working paper in the global indices but again we cannot pinpoint and remember all such uh, 
recommendations as well as the problems highlighted by the working paper okay so what i have done is i have picked out the most important ones and i have discussed it here and you can use such points in your interview or in your phase 2 descriptive answers because yes india's rank is shown very poorly in many in many indices okay now we are talking about these three indices which have been taken into consideration by this working paper so let's see what was india's rank in these paper in these indices indices recently so first of all is the freedom in the world index which is released by your freedom house organization which is a us based organization so here india ranked 66th out of 210 countries okay not very poor rank but it is poor for a country which is, which claims itself to be the largest functional democracy then we have eiu's democracy index 46 out of 167 and the index claims india to be partly free then we have vdems democracy index wherein india is ranked at 93rd position out of 202 and india is positioned in the bottom 50% of the countries as far as the liberal democracy index is concerned so guys <coughs> yes india's rank is shown very poorly and these three are the indices related to the freedom and the democracy of the nation so that is why it is important that you pay attention to the uh decreasing rank of india and at the same time the problems highlighted by the working paper in the concern worldwide global hunger index also the ranking of india is shown very poorly it is 107 i guess so that is also a concern so that was the question number 2 now we are on question number 3 which places have been declared as tamil nadu's first the biodiversity heritage site so Aritha Patti village and Minakshi Puram village have been declared as the first biodiversity heritage site of Tamil Nadu and both of these uh, villages are part of the Madurai district okay so that is the entire news nothing much is there which state celebrates the sangai festival so manipur celebrates this festival and uh, this festival celebrates the sangai deer which is the state animal of manipur as well so do remember this fact now this animal is found in floating kebul lamjao national park in loktak lake so do remember this well as well okay now guys i have one question for all of you can you tell me that where is the world's largest river island located or present okay it is in india that is the hint from my side you have to just tell me the state in which uh, the world's largest river island is located and inhabited by many people okay so this is the last question of the day which of the following version of the agni missile was test fired from the apj abdul kalam island odisha in november 2022 so here you can see different variants and let me inform you that all these variants are there in the are there in the you can say in india in the defense profile so they are working now agni 3 has been recently test fired by uh, the by india from the apj abdul kalam Odi, uh, island odisha okay so it is an intermediate range ballistic missile and agni guys is a part of the uh, is the part of the uh, program which which was started by the apj abdul kalam himself that is the integrated guided missile program under which we have nag trishul akash agni and uh, your uh, okay agni akash nag trishul and prithvi missile so these are the five missiles which have been launched by the apj abdul kalam in order to make india self reliant as far as the missile technology and defense technology is concerned now guys it's time for us to know that what are the locations from where the missile or rocket test are being done by drdo and isro so here we have three prime locations first is this apj abdul kalam island which is in odisha okay near the coast of odisha then we have tiruvananthapuram kerala and we have this shri hari kota andhra pradesh okay so these are the three prime locations uh, or the only locations in india from where drdo and isro conduct the missile launches as well as rocket launches okay 
so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the content thank you so much for watching it now if you have any queries any uh, comments you can mention it in the comment section below thank you so much again